Good day. Coming to you guys um, to introduce you to this week's new writer and our new story, John Cheever. And the story we will be taking in is called The Swimmer. Um, John Cheever is one of my favorite uh, writers because of his way of description, right? He sticks with um, modernism as we've established it by taking us into a region, um, taking us into a culture and a way of thinking uh, that, again, we have not really seen before. Moving deeper into the 20th century, um, moving on from Zora Neale Hurston and her education, uh, for us on what life would be like in Eatonville, Florida. John Cheever does the same thing for us for suburbia. Um, he had this idea um, of crafting short stories that looked at it from a, uh, an interrupted event. He considered this to be the prime um, sort of source for his material when it came to short stories. He was really famous for his clear and direct language and then taking um, incidents and anecdotes and crafting a world around them. So his commentary uh, that goes along with the story this week, uh, Why I Write Short Stories, which you'll find on page 893, really takes us into his thinking when it comes to the crafting of short fiction. But it also gives us insight into his motivation for his characters as well. And so this week it is Nettie. You know, how does Nettie move through this world? How does he navigate? Um, why does he do the things he, do, he, he does? What is his perspective like? On page 893 of our textbook, uh, coming from the commentary, Why I Write Short Stories, from the very bottom uh, of 893 and leading us into 894, again, we get this motivation that John Cheever himself uh, observed uh, in the waking world that um, in which he lived, uh, in which he himself navigated through, and then bringing that same sense to the page. It reads, In the short stories of my esteemed colleagues and in a few of my own, I find those rented summer houses those one-night love affairs, and those lost key rings that confound traditional aesthetics. We are not a nomadic people, but there is more than a hint of the spirit of our great country, and the short story is the literature of the nomad. Continuing on on 894, I like to think that the view of a suburban street that I imagine from my window would appeal to a wanderer or to someone familiar with loneliness. Okay, I'm going to start right there. I think he clearly states his view of suburban life. It is one of isolation. It is one of loneliness. Um, that isolation not necessarily being through... Um, geography, but through sort of um, an emotional um, building of fences, if you will. That there's something about uh, suburbia as he saw it that led to these two um, very stark, uh, stark emotional happenings. And so this thought and idea permeates. It's all throughout the swimmer, right? And so I want you guys to be aware of that. That's why the commentaries are so important. It takes you into the thinking of the writer. The writer brings their observations, their memories, their imaginations to their work. And we get to know who they are and how they see the world. So if we can understand um, where um, their footing is, then we can possibly uh, get some synergy and some resonance to a deeper understanding of the story. He wanted to look at the morals and the manners and the rituals and traditions of suburban uh, life. And again, that is the connection with modernism, showing us the cultures of uh, a people that are being written about.
one particular character being a representation for a greater whole. Now, the main character of Nettie uh, is just really a masterwork. Now, Cheever sets up Nettie's journey. The swimming of each of the swimming pools is more than just uh, geography. This journey is more than geography. It is one of time as well. And how does time impact Nettie? This is where we get some fantasy elements. Um, they really come into play. But it also leads us to something um, called an allegory. When we talk about allegory, what that really means is a way to bring about symbolism in a longer narrative that seems unrelated, but it really is to teach a lesson or to prove a point. What is the lesson or the point that Cheever is trying to leave us with in The Swimmer? Now, a metaphor... You know, it's easy to get allegory and metaphor uh, mixed up. But in general, a metaphor is a short phrase or a paragraph that compares two seem seemingly unrelated things to make that point. But an allegory is the entire story in and of itself. OK, so allegories would be bigger um, presentations and metaphors would be smaller presentations. The swimmer is an allegory. What is the lesson that Cheever wants to leave us with? What I was uh, referring to about uh, the main character, Nettie, and the journey uh, that he's undertaking uh, by going from swimming pool to swimming pool is not just of um, geography, but of time. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, there's definitely some fantasy elements going on here. I'm going to come from the bottom of page 158. This is um, the first page of the story. And I'm going to jump, uh, jump around a little bit. So starting on the bottom of 158. To be embraced and sustained by the light green water was less a pleasure, it seemed, than the resumption of a natural condition. And he would have liked to swim without trunks, but this was not possible, considering his project. He hoisted himself up on the far curb, he never used a ladder, and started across the lawn. When Lucinda asked where he was going, he said he was going to swim home. Okay, so this is Nettie, the main character, and his wife, Lucinda. I wanted to really point out how he starts off the journey. Uh, he hoisted himself up on the far curb. He never used the ladder, right? He starts off with energy, vim, and vigor, and strength. This is at the very beginning of the journey. But if we were to skip ahead to page 165... It's later in the journey. Again, this is a journey of not just geography, but of time. Listen to the difference. We go from he never used a ladder to this, 165. He dove in and swam the pool, but when he tried to haul himself up onto the curb, he found that the strength in his arms and shoulders had gone, and he paddled to the ladder and climbed out. Now, remember, he never used a ladder at the very beginning. He said he never used a ladder at all. And this was illustrated at the beginning of the story. But now we're late in the journey. We're late in the day. We're late in life. He needs that ladder. He seeks that ladder out and he uses it. Continuing on, looking over his shoulder, he saw in the lighted bathhouse a young man Going out onto the dark lawn, he smelled chrysanthemums or marigolds, some stubborn, stubborn autumnal fragrance on the night air, strong as gas. Looking overhead, he saw that the stars had come out. But why should he seem to see Andromeda, Cephesus, and Cassiopeia? 
what had become of the constellations of midsummer. He began to cry. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> so, this is an allegory. What is Cheever trying to tell us? What is he trying to leave us with? That's what I want you guys to, to grapple with. That's what I want you to bring to your discussion board attempts. What is Cheever trying to leave us with? You guys will be focusing in on your active reading uh, for John Cheever, the swimmer. You'll find that on page 158 of our textbook. And then that commentary I started off with, why I write short stories. You'll find that on page 893. Okay, once you finish your active reading, have those active reading notes uh, sitting right next to you, refer to them often, and use that to tackle the discussion board. Any new knowledge that comes up as you are um, making an attempt at each of those three questions, go ahead and write that down for yourself because you're moving into the assignment with a baseline uh, set of knowledge. And then as you think and reflect on the, uh, the questions and your uh, potential answers, new uh, understanding can happen. These are going to be due uh, Sunday, October 17th. This is the discussion board. And don't forget, you have to respond to two classmates by Monday the 18th. Okay. All right, my friends. Take care. And I will see you guys in class next week.